Can you go back there? <laughs> yeah, it needs to be further. No, don't move that one. Oh, I was thought the cord it was the cord was stuck, but it doesn't matter. Alright, I think that'll work. Okay. I think I'd be a little bit used to it by now, but used to what? Setting up the camera and everything. But I'm not. Alright. Alright. Oh, fuck. Alright. I'll just edit that out in pre production. Post production. <laughs> See myself, you good? I knocked into them. I'm gonna have a knock on my head. <laughs> oh, you're live already. Yeah, I already told you I was live. But I can see my whole self, which is good, and I can see the desk. Well, there's got to be a lag, babe. It's got to, it's got to travel through the, the I waves. Go, so. No, I need to see the chat. I think. Let's see the chat. Well, I guess I can. Yeah, we'll see. I'll have to keep reaching over. Off. You want to adjust it a little bit? Yeah, just tilt it upward just a little bit. Let me know. Careful. Yep, gotcha. Stop, stop, stop. <gasps> I flipped the camera. <laughs> We're professionals. Okay. Good? Yeah, it's just super crooked. Man. It's fine. Come over here. Well, let me just leave it. it. Just leave it. Just leave it. Is your head okay? Why'd you do that? Let me see. Turn the light. It be okay. What's up, people? Green Alloy's back. <laughs> yeah, I remember you, buddy. Every time. I won't forget now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have those same shots. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so I'm going to sit here for a quick sec, make sure that I can see everybody, talk to everybody. We're going to make some epoxy resin slabs, which I make these slingshots out of. <laughs> the lighting here is terrible, I'm sorry guys. So, that's one example. Here's another. made a clear one, although it was made in a different way, but you can still make them the same way. 
It's like ice. This one's one of my faves. It's smaller pork. And then uh, I also made one of the Simple Shot cores into a slingshot, which is really what you should do because it adds a ton of strength to the uh, to the slingshot. You don't have to worry so much about getting four kits, but yeah, you like that orange one? I like the orange one a lot. It's got a couple of little like white and pink swirls in there, and it's a beauty. If you guys want these, let me know. Um, typically, I sell these kind of cheap because they're pretty quick and easy to make. So I usually only sell them for about uh, 25 bucks or so. Nope. A few people watching, I think we'll just get started. So as we work with epoxy, you want to glove up because this stuff, uh, it's a little bit difficult to wash off your hands. If you get it pretty quick, like right away, it will wash off just fine. But everything else, at, at any other point, it's going to take a minute to wash off your hands. It's also super, super sticky, like super sticky. So um, <laughs> it's just going to stick to everything. Um, we are going to make one of the blue and orange one. So hopefully my guy um, who wants the blue and orange one hops on so he can watch us do it, actually. And Fran's going to be in charge of that one. Um, Fran basically wins every time we make one of these things. Um, <laughs> it's a concept. Well, all of the ones that I've sold have been the ones you've made. All of the ones that I made have not sold. So... Um, Anyway, yeah, she's much better at them than I am. Much better at them. But I'm going to make one too, and um, we're going to kind of show you the step-by-step -step process here. We got the epoxy set up. We got a few cups set up. The colors, pigments. Let's get started. You want to grab uh, that one? We figured out that these three-ounce cups, it needs four exactly filled to the top, so we're going to do two filled with part A, two filled with part B, and then this is an 8x8 eight eight silicone uh, cake pan, and uh, these are perfect because the epoxy doesn't stick to them, so the slabs peel out really easily. These are one-to-one -one ratio epoxy, so basically you mix one-to-one -one parts one part to one part. Um, these are the ones we've been using since the beginning of time, <laughs> Fran and I. But uh, there's a lot of other epoxies out there. Some are two part or uh, two to one or three to one ratios or more. Um, we like this right now, but we haven't really tried the other ones. So maybe we'll like the other ones more, but we'll never know. This particular epoxy is also mixed one part to one part by volume. Which is why we're not using a scale.
should say that we are not sponsored. This is not a sponsored video. So, Total Boat is the epoxy brand that we use. I paid for this full price, so if it sucks, I can tell you that it sucks, and if it's good, I can tell you that it's good. get too close. I can't stop this flow as quickly because it's so much thicker. Take those over. Thank you. And I'll swap a two part for two part. I can still see the chat too guys so if you do have any questions just shout them out or or type them in the chat, that'll probably be more uh, efficient. <laughs> Did we get bigger popsicle sticks at some point? Yes. I didn't put them in. going to grab bigger popsicle sticks because these popsicle sticks are too small. I have big hands. I need, bigger, I need a bigger stick. <laughs> My gloves are parting. If you can't find them, it's no big deal. Just forget about it. We'll, we'll use these. They'll work for now. So after you have your... After you have your two... Two of each cup, so you have two of the part A, two of the part B. What we like to do is just pour them into a bigger cup and mix them. Um, because it's hard to mix into these tiny little cups. And the epoxy needs to be mixed pretty thoroughly. So you want to really, really mix it up. Would it be nice if you just, if you put a thin layer of wood? Oh yeah, for sure. We, uh, you know, the epoxy can mix with a lot of stuff. You can put, uh, when I make my card, I use this epoxy. And, and uh, I actually just put felt or some other types of fabric in there and then layer it, like a layer of epoxy, a layer of some type of material, epoxy material, epoxy material, epoxy material. And you just keep overlapping them like that, and it basically makes like a cloth plywood. If I had that cutting board to show them. <laughs> Which one? The, the one with the wood. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought... Yeah. I thought you meant like we had one that we use. Oh, no. She's in the middle of making like a cutting board, serving board.
got a little bump. Well, for a little. <laughs> I'm going to still mix them up once they're in the cups. the last comment said? match my level. <sighs> Man, it worked out today. I'm so pooped already. I bet I'm going to be sore tomorrow. keep going up and down the stairs to get all the stuff ready. <laughs> Have you seen the new Axiom Simple Shot? Oh, for sure. The aluminum ones, they're, they're oh my god. They're, they're beautiful. Fork shooter just got here. What's the project? We're making um, resin, epoxy resin slabs to make slingshots with. Should be noted too that this one to one mixture of the total boat epoxy has about a 20 or 30 minute work time. So once you start mixing, you gotta keep mixing. What did I miss? What's up, Slingshot Fever? What's up, Adam? Um, not the answer, yeah. No, you didn't miss anything, buddy. We're just mixing epoxy. It's not a race. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
loops. And that's why we put down a drop cloth. Do you lose that? Nah, I got a good puddle though. It's salvageable at this point. Oh yeah, rebar is awesome, man. And again, I think I said this last time, but it doesn't need that much heat. And you can bend it. Dropping, dropping my slingshot there. Okay, so I got to come up with a color combo. Um, if you guys want to, real quick, give me a, a color combo you want to see. We'll do like a, maybe we'll make a, a viewer described color combo and then do a giveaway. I think that's a good idea. How thick do you make them? Um, they are going to be about... Yeah, but I could also just... I'm going to say that they are somewhere between like a quarter inch and about five sixteenths of an inch. Um, each slab. And that gives you a little bit to work away if you want to thin it down a little bit. And when I make the slingshots like that, it's just two pieces put together of a boxy. And the slingshot's plenty strong, but, you know, if you get four kits, it may break. Um, you can make it a little thinner if you have an aluminum core down the middle. And that way, um, you know, you don't get such a huge slingshot. But I would prefer to make it just a little bit thicker than it needs to be, because that way you can you can do some a little bit of sanding and some work to it. Um, once you've sanded it, it will look like crap, but as soon as you put another real thin layer of epoxy on, the epoxy fills in all those little gaps and holes, makes it look beautiful again. Has anybody else used epoxy before? Do camo, brown, tan, green. Camo, brown, Oh, you got that tan, one. green. Mm hmm I can do one that's like that. Black and red. Black and red comes out really nice. Um, I actually have a couple like that, but I made them out of my carta. So, the reason we pour them back into these little cups is because each of these cups is going to get a different color. Okay. Let's start to sort through. So we'll do... We'll throw a copper. Got charcoal. Brown, I don't like that much. Ooh, olive. And we'll try peacock. You guys can see differences in those colors. This is olive and olive and peacock green. This is charcoal and copper. So we'll do a few. You like that? 
do you use the same epoxy to glue layers or something different? Um, I use two-part epoxy glue to glue them together instead of just the regular epoxy. So I use like a, a 3500 PSI epoxy glue. And actually that epoxy glue is a five minute epoxy. It, it sets in about five minutes. It takes about 20 minutes to really cure, maybe half an hour. I'm using mica powder. Fran is using some mica powder, but she's also using some liquid colorant. And they have a very different effect in the epoxy. The mica powders are almost totally opaque. I mean, you, you, you really can't see through them. And these liquid colorants sometimes get really transparent. So they, they make some crazy good effects when you uh, use both. Here, should I say what we got? Sapphire, apricot, and then just regular orange, which is actually kind of like pinkish in the bottle, but it'll come out orange, and then a royal blue. So taking the blue-orange theme to the next level. <laughs> Again, you really need to thoroughly mix this epoxy because if you don't mix it well enough, you'll get, like the part A for instance is so thick, and if you don't mix it into the hardener that well, um, you'll get like these kind of soft spots that don't cure right. So you really, really want to make sure you mix it well. Yeah, but it's right there. I saw him on the uh, saw him on the counter over there. You do need those though.
of this charcoal is like black. It's like staring into the an abyss. I want to make a slingshot channel. You have advice? Just the best advice I give, the same advice to everybody that asks me, which isn't that many people because I'm not a huge channel, but I have gotten asked a couple times. The best advice that I have if you want to start a YouTube channel is to just make videos and put them on the internet because you're going to make bad videos in the beginning and people don't really care that much about that. They care more about what you're talking about or what you're doing than the quality of the video. And then as you go along, you'll learn how to make the videos better. You'll learn what people like to see. You'll learn what kind of energy you have. You'll rewatch your own videos. I do it all the time. And you'll basically figure out what you do well and you'll start doing that more and then do the things that you don't do well less. Um, I'm filming from my phone. I probably will do that for a, quite a while. You gave me inspiration. Hey, thanks. I appreciate that, man. I, that's Most of the reason that I want to make a YouTube channel and have a YouTube channel and, and continue to do YouTube is for my own benefit. It's so that I can watch these videos back in the future and say, hey, look what I was doing then. What am I doing now? And see if I'm getting better. The other thing is, I think it would be really cool to have seen my grandparents and great grandparents. And, you know, these are on the internet, and the internet is supposedly forever. So <laughs> it would be cool if, like, our grandkids and great grandkids get to see these videos someday. It's actually kind of freaking me out because. Well, this is like kind of like my debut, and I'm like, <laughs> you've been on before. Uh, but I guess I never really got over. That's the big deal. The big, <laughs> the big thing, the biggest thing is just to make videos and put them on the internet, because they're gonna suck at first, and then you will get better as long as you're persistent with it. And the other thing is, make videos that you want to make. And stay with it because you'll get subscribers, you'll get followers, you'll get people that like to watch you. Eventually they will come. Just keep making. Put it out there. Don't be hesitant about it. Don't be shy about it. Um, it's going to suck at first. Just get over it. Can you see the color? It looks like candy. It looks like melted Jolly Rancher. Why am I standing like Mr. Burns? <laughs> See that for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> now this peacock green, it did not come out how I thought it was going to, so I'm gonna add in some drops. Oh no. Where's the limon? I'm gonna add in some citron. Not limon, citron. You know? What? And uh, I'm going to yellow it up a little bit. Looks like almost like a golden green, Ooh, right? I like that better, yeah. Cause look at how it contrasts now. Yeah. To... Yeah. That's nice. 
hopefully you'll be able to tell the difference in the finished piece. When you pour in the epoxy, it just kind of does its own thing sometimes, and you, you do not get the effects that you're after all the time. So you just gotta kind you gotta kind of have a little bit of luck, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely need that downward facing. Yeah, like a top-down camera for sure. Just trust us, guys. It's very satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Uh, you like the Sparrow catapult from Father? I haven't tried it. I haven't tried the Sparrow yet. I put purple. Oh yeah, purple and green. That's like my one of my favorite color combos, purple and green. It's all secondary colors. Yeah, I like the secondary purple, colors. Purple, green, and orange. Purple, green, and orange. That's my jam. I'm into it. <clears throat> Dang, I don't know what to do first, man. I know. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna darken up that dark green. Color. Okay. I didn't want to say uh oh. show. I don't know Ooh. how well you guys can see that, but it is pretty pretty. Okay, I'm going to bring the camera closer, like an over the top kind of. I'm going to try. Sorry, you guys got to look inside my ear. <laughs> For anyone that wanted to see. There we go. Okay. Now we can see the pour. <clears throat> the good stuff. Yeah, see it? That's good. You guys don't have to watch me sweat. <laughs> but you can look at my junk. <laughs> <All right. laughs> We're just going to go right into the middle a little bit. Ooh. And again, you never get the effects you're really after. Was hunting iguana today, you only caught four. Oh. See? <laughs> only caught four. It's nice funny. job, man. What did that other guy say? Vic. Vic. Broadway. Yep, that is a cool color. Hey, man, I, I like that. I think this... This other green is actually really nice too. But that dark green, oh my goodness. It's freaking gorgeous. Oh yeah, you also have to torch it a little bit to get these little bubbles out.
very contrasted on camera, and the actual lighting in here, it doesn't look that contrasted. And this is all just like blown out. Yeah. It like really blends in. That looks like dark moon. Hey man, I'm cool with that. Yeah, but every time we try to blend them, we don't blend them. If they, if they don't blend, every time we try to do that, it never mixes. Almost never. like art. Absolutely, it is art. <laughs> it's art of the finest quality. <laughs> this almost looks like a peacock leaf they're making. I don't know what that is. Peacock leaf? The teardrop with the circles? Oh. Yeah, I guess you're right. A peacock feather, I think you mean. Ah. Yep. Since peacocks <laughs> are animals and not plants. <laughs>
Bro, look from camera side. It looks like green minion with one eye. <laughs> I must have missed the part where it was a minion. <laughs> All right, guys, how do you think it's looking so far? Looks pretty crazy, I think. <clears throat> it's bending over is for the birds. Um, last color. I want to fill these in the spots. Benito, ladies and gentlemen, we just got to torch it a little bit, and then it's finished. We let them sit.
By the way, guys, there's a link in the description. An affiliate link for Amazon for this epoxy resin. If you guys go to that link and you buy your epoxy resin, you will help support my channel. Support me. Help me keep making awesome videos that you guys love to watch. That looks really awesome. I love all those details in there. It does right now. I almost don't even want to like swirl it or I anything. I know. Some kind of... I might throw a it. few little touches in there though. Like this in here. Ooh, I'm all wobbly from my workout. <laughs> this right through here too. Mm. Ooh, look at that. It's a little swirl. I don't know. I think that looks pretty cool. You can obviously do a lot with it. I think you should go in for a close up. It's hard to see with the camera up there. Don't you get it and film me doing that? I think that's good. I think we'll just leave it like that. I really like the way that looks. Just let it do its thing from that point. I kind of don't want to touch it. Give you guys a little bit of close up here. I kind of really like those crackles and I don't know if I want to go with a smooth swirl. That's what mine looks like. The dark green really did not pop through that much. Such a pretty color too. I'm pretty disappointed in that. The all on bottom, it'll look really pretty from the Yeah, it might. It might. I don't know. My The bottom of them might never look very good. And then this is the one that my wife did. How she gets these effects every single time. I do not know. I don't get it. <laughs> She's so good at this. So good. That's like... That's gorgeous. That's a that's a gorgeous slab. I hope that it stays that like that. They do change over time as they cure... Yeah, they uh, they do change, but not too much, not too bad. We'll hit it with the torch a couple more times too, just to make sure we get the bubbles out. I need to take lessons. I know. I try. I mean, I think mine looks pretty cool. I think it looks awesome. Yeah, I really like it. I just, I don't know how get those effects like that. It's it's nuts. It's nuts. It looks like... It looks like orange and blue... It looks like orange desert canyons with little blue rivers running through it. <laughs> I like that. It's amazing. Yeah, and I'll show you a little bit more close-up of the ones that I had. This one is one my wife made. And actually, she poured the slab. I make the slingshots, she pours the slabs. It's kind of the unwritten rule we have, because she's so much better at it. <laughs> and you're better at shaping them. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just, I've done it more, so. And then, I made this one, which is my favorite one that I've made. Again, there's no core. And these slingshots are are strong enough to take the heaviest bands you can put on here, I promise. And they will not slip off because the the epoxy resin gives it like kind of a little bit of a tackiness actually. And uh yeah the, the bands love to stay on there. They they never slip off ever. I've never had it happen. Even without band grooves. And then I made this one out of one of the Simple Shot aluminum cores. 
and this one's kind of like a camo look to it. Um, it's got like white gold with that same copper and brown mixed in, and then the green. I was really happy with this one. I, I tried to band this one up and shoot it well, but it just doesn't. I, I'm not good with this design. I just really like it for how it came out, the looks-wise. And then I got this one, which I love these colors. There's like a little tiny bit of pink thrown in there. Vic says, I love that one. Vic, are you talking about the orange one? Or the simple shot one. Either way. I'm lucky enough not to get very many fork hits. Hardly ever. Um, I take my time when I'm shooting typically. I don't know how well these would take a fork hit. Honestly. Um, the, the, uh, the simple shot one. Yeah, the camo on that one came out just so nice. It just came out so nice. It almost looks 3D. And then I made this, which is iced out. I didn't get all the bubbles out. It's actually really hard to get all the bubbles out. Um, it's hard for me because I mix super fast, so it creates lots of bubbles. <laughs> Anyway, get you back to here, and then a scrap chunk of the dry resin. Huh. Mm -hmm. like mixing it with a scrap chunk of the dry resin? Oh, maybe. Glacier, yes, absolutely. Glacier. Okay, I'm going to hit this with... Uh, yeah, it's already changed. It's already shifted. Is my level over there? Can you grab that, please? Yours didn't need much. Kind of gave it a little, a little bit of a pass over. All right, something we probably should have done before we made these was level the table. And this side needs to come up a little bit. And this side needs to come up a little bit. So I we'll have to put it underneath. Hand me that piece of flooring. Table. Can you uh, just slide it under there for me? I actually really like how it's how it's coming out. Take a scrap chunk and shoot it to see how it takes four kits. Ah, yes, that is a very good idea. I do have quite a few scrap chunks of this stuff. Do we have multiple chairs over there? Ugh. 
Sorry, guys. I know it's super unprofessional. But... <laughs> that's how we do it here. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see it take a fork hit because the stuff is pretty heavy duty. Uh, it's not, um, it's not, they're, they're not fragile. Like, first of all, I made them so thick. I made this like a half inch thick. And this epoxy resin is super hard, super, mm, I shouldn't say that it's like flexible, I wouldn't say, but it I think it would take a fork hit kind of I think it would take a fork hit. The only problem is once it does start to crack, it'll crack all the way through at least halfway. <laughs> and that's just not good. So you really don't want to be fork hitting them. I mean, like I said before, I don't get very many fork hits anymore. Um which is knock on wood. Um, that's a good thing for me. And I wouldn't be afraid to shoot these at all. But they're beautiful slingshots. They, they always come out super nice, so I'm unopposed to just... Uh... <laughs> Ugh, I'm unopposed to just basically uh, putting them on the wall and letting them be a... letting them be a piece of art on my wall. <laughs> Don't have anything better to say about it than that, I guess. It does look really good, though. I like how mine came out. Um, in other news, these Falcon bands, I'm still on the original set after a week um, I've probably put three to four hundred shots through these, maybe a little bit more. There is no sign of breakage. There is no sign of tearing. They look pretty good, all things considered. Um, they're still nice and snappy. I've been alternating these with a pair of Theraband Gold um, bands that I have on another slingshot. Um, just trying to use up what TheraBand I have left. I uh, I can't not like it. I can't not like TheraBand because of how well it shoots, how well it feels, how it feels, I should say, when you shoot it. I think that it feels great to shoot. Um, stretch is so nice and it smells good. <laughs> I know I talk about that every time, but... I'm just trying to use up what I have left of it. I put some TheraBand gold on a natural that I made. Um, TheraBand gold just looks great on naturals. Sorry guys, I have a terrible nervous habit of biting my fingertips. That epoxy is going to set in about an hour, so it'll be hard to the touch in about an hour or two hours, but it will be, so it'll be hard, you won't be able to move it around, but it won't be hard, like I could push my finger through it still. Um, we usually delaminate them out of these pans, out of these silicone pans, after 24 hours. And after 24 hours, it'll be hard. You'll be able to work with it, but you'll you'll if you try hard enough, you'll be able to bend it. And so, what you really want to do is you really want to before you actually cut scales out or um, make a slingshot out of it, you really want to let it sit for at least 48 hours. Actually, I think on the bottle it says 72 hours. Thank you. 
right back. I'm going to grab a drink. What? What? <laughs> I said I was maybe going to pour some clear on this one. Oh, you're not going to sit with me and answer questions? That's fair. I like you anyway. I promise one day we'll get it right. We'll get this lighting situation figured out. <laughs> so we've been live now 68 minutes. So that didn't take very long at all to pour that. Probably took about an hour, and then uh, again, it takes a day or two to to, to cure. Um, we'll probably delaminate them um, out of the out of the silicone tray after 24 hours, and then we'll just to admire them and see how they turned out, and then we'll let them sit again for another day or two before I actually work on them. Green alloy. I got my Sparrow in the mail a couple days ago. Haven't put bands on it yet, but the frame feels great in my hand. I'm sure I'll enjoy shooting it. Yeah, that's a that's a frame I'm looking forward to getting eventually. Um, I do like the shape. Uh, I don't know if I talked about this before, but on slingshots, I don't like these things. I don't even know what we call them. I have referred to this as a W frame because of the way that it, like, does that kind of thing. I don't know if that's what other people call them. But I don't like this part. So, when I make slingshots, I leave that off. I like it to be real nice and even all the way through. Make that, like that one. Like that. So, I can hold it like that. And then, of course, my Yeti is like a really dramatic kind of Y shape. I leave those off as well. Slingshot Fever. I have two of the Sparrows. I love them. Yeah, I. that's a frame I need to get for sure. of the finger placement grooves for pinch grip. Yeah. Whatever they are, whatever they're called, finger placement grooves, that seems about, about as technically correct as you can get. I hate them. I hate them. Uh, they, I don't pinch grip. Actually, the first, one of the first slingshots I started, 
was a replica of a PPMG that I made really poorly. And uh, it was pinch grip. And I thought that I was going to love pinch grip. And uh, obviously I shot pinch grip and TTF. And I hated it. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I hated it. So I, I only like brace grip now. I only shoot brace grip. And I leave those off of most of my designs that I make, most of the naturals that I make. Ooh, there's a big old hole in there. Here I was just talking about how long they've lasted and not even noticed that there's a big hole. It's okay. We'll put we'll put another set on. It lasted a few hundred shots at least. At least, I think I probably took. I don't know. I practiced with this last weekend in my backyard for about two hours. So I would imagine that took at least a hundred or two hundred shots. Just that one practice session. So I bet that it's. I bet that it's probably, I bet it's close to 500 shots total that I put through these bands. <clears throat> Do you shoot descenders? I pinch those. Yep, I shoot descenders. I am very regular with my descenders. They're one of my faves. I brace it. They're small in my hand, but they fit in a perfect brace. I do not pinch them. Can't shoot. I don't shoot pinch grip on any frame that I shoot regularly. If the actually, I'll I'll take that back. Sorry, this slingshot. Got this on Amazon. It actually came with two slingshots. So it's two of exactly the same thing. And it was like $14 for two slingshots. This frame, I pinch grip. I barely ever shoot this thing. I only shoot it for a little bit of fun uh, now and then. But I pinch grip this frame. If it's made for it, I'll do it. Otherwise, I do not pinch grip at all. My favorite non-slingshot object is my Karen slingshot from Car Parts. <laughs> do you, how do you hold that? Do you brace grip it? Or do you hammer grip it or what? All the pinchers are probably still too small for your monster size paws. So I can wrap my hand all the way around this. You can see my finger and my thumb are touching. It's just, they're so small. These slingshots are so small. My hands are very large. But, I would pinch grip that. Pinch grip, yeah. How wide is the fork gap? Uh, that car park slingshot, how wide is the fork gap on it? Hit me up when you're going to make one. I will. I'll let you know.
Yeah. Okay. You got me. That's pro. I. That's. <laughs> Should have been obvious. <laughs> Boom, 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 boom. So these are changing quite a bit. Another few minutes, I'll show them to you guys again. See if I can hit it with the torch real quick. Yeah, it's done now. It's done now. It ain't moving now. That's alright. I'll show you guys what they look like um, in a little bit. We'll, wa we'll wait for probably, um, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 more minutes, maybe half an hour if I'm still on. And I'll show you guys what they look like because they will change uh, a little bit as the some of the resin settles down and then some will move over the top of it a little bit. So it's kind of cool. You can't, you can plan kind of what you want it to look like, but you can never get it exactly right, exactly right because uh, the epoxy is just a little bit unpredictable, and how the colors mix with each other is pretty unpredictable too. What we've noticed is that sometimes one color will like sink to the bottom, and so it sort of disappears over the top of the uh, slab, but then when you, you know, take it out of there, you can clearly see that color is dominant on the bottom. And so what you can do is, when you cut the template out, or when you cut the scale out, you can always see which side you like the most, the top or the bottom, and you can pick which one actually looks better. It's a bit larger than the epoxy slim shot. Yeah, and then, uh, yeah, so that happens. I'm sure that's actually what happened with the one that I made. That dark green color is almost non-existent right now. So I'm going to assume that a lot of it is on the bottom. guys have any questions too about the epoxy about the slabs about whatever uh you know just put them in the comments i'll try to get to them as uh, as best i can while we're sort of waiting for these to set don't really have anything else to talk about beside that oh yeah let me show you too um Show you the brand. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh God, no! The lighting's terrible. <laughs> there you go. Sig Wong epoxy resin colorant. You got this on Amazon. Also got this one, Art Pro Pigments. And again, we got that on Amazon. I actually hunt with my carrot slingshot. That's what I hunted the iguana. It's awesome, man. Like I said, there ain't no iguana where I live. <laughs> I live. Uh, if you guys look uh, on the map of the United States and you find Lake Michigan, I live about a half mile from the very bottom of Lake Michigan. 
So if you go, if you find Lake Michigan, you find where the bottom is. I live about a half mile away from Lake Michigan. There is no iguana up here, none whatsoever. If I saw an iguana, I would think that it escaped somebody's house. I would not shoot it. <laughs> but uh, you know, in this area, we get plenty of squirrel, plenty of rabbit. Lots of uh, annoying birds, actually. Um, it's funny, this morning I saw a woodpecker in my backyard. Um, we hear it sometimes around here, but it's pretty rare that we get to see a woodpecker out here. And then, uh, you know, we get like the typical pigeons. And pigeons and seagulls and, I don't know, other robins. <sighs> Where I live, there ain't no squirrel. So sad. Yeah, man, that, that sucks. Squirrel are, all, squirrel are fun to hunt because they're very tough. Taking a few squirrel, and... I hit one one time right behind the shoulder and it went into the rib cage and hit the heart and when I opened it up I typically like to eat the heart and the kidneys and the liver and the heart was masticated it was destroyed and then um, every other squirrel that I've taken has been a headshot. So the one time I hit it right in the rib cage, right behind the shoulder, it went into the squirrel and blew out the heart. Every other squirrel that I've ever taken, headshot, um, typically with 11 millimeter steel. And pretty rare. I think only I think only one other time, maybe twice, two squirrels that I've got have been bloodied on the outside from either go either a little bit of penetration or like hitting the brain. Um Now, the penetration heart shot was with a 9.5 steel. The only reason I actually used the 9.5 was because the squirrel, I was practicing. I was not out hunting. I was practicing. And the squirrel came right, I mean like 15 feet from me. And it just stopped right in front of me. <laughs> And it was about that time, so I just loaded up, shot. I was using .65, cut 25, or uh, yeah, 25 to 19, and it was like 15 feet, and I hit it, boom. With a 9.5 steel. It literally, it was crazy too because I, I shot it and when you, typically when you hit like a headshot on a squirrel, you hear like a smacking sound, like a, like a flack, right? This was like a, sounded like it went into the mud, like, I, I can't even describe the sound. And then the squirrel shot up in the air, ran up a tree and fell onto the ground and died. It, it was so wild to watch. I thought I thought I might have missed it the way the way that it ran off. But uh, yeah, it basically it basically ran about probably 25 feet, got about 10 feet up a tree and then just fell down and was dead.
Yep, I hunt with the simple shot. I'm not really sure what that symbol is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a killer with velocity. Yep, that good body thump. Yeah, dude, it was it was such a odd sound. I'm so used to the headshot and it sounds like whack and you're like and you know you hit it. I shot it and it sounded like I just shot <laughs> a it sounded like I took a shot in the mud. Like it it did not make a fun sound. <clears throat> and uh yeah, it basically it got uh it got about twenty five feet from me and then just KO'd instantly. Three eighths. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what that symbol was, but it's got like a weird eight slash eight slash nine point five. Three eighths inch. Yeah, the 9.5. I'm almost, sometimes, you know, you're like, a, I'm like a little bit scared to shoot a 9.5. I, uh, I almost prefer to just have the 11 millimeter steel for, for the extra foot pounds that you get out of the, out of the ammo. Which days do you go live? Uh, it varies. I went live for a few Mondays in a row. Uh, like three Mondays in a row. And then the last two weeks I've done Wednesday. So I don't have like a set day right now. I'm trying to work it out with what my schedule allows. Um, but I'll probably be alive like once a week. Um... I like doing the lives uh, for a few different reasons, but the biggest one is because I get to actually talk to you guys. I, you know, when I make a regular video and then, um, you know, post it up to YouTube, I, it, it's not quite as personal. It's not like, uh, I don't know, I just like this better. I like being able to chat, talk to you about what's going on. Um, talk live, talk off the top of my head, not have to worry about editing, not have to worry about thumbnails, not have to worry about all that dumb crap that comes along with making a YouTube video. But I do like making them. I shouldn't I shouldn't say that it's dumb crap, but I do like the editing process, and I do like trying to find music that fits the sort of mood that I'm in when I was making the video or when I was, when I was filming the video. Um, I like being able to make it interesting that way. So make it interesting like on the editing side and make it interesting on the, like what content I want to show you guys on a week to week basis. But, uh, you know, doing the lives is awesome because I get to live chat with people, like talk in the moment and make that part of the content. I really like that. We bought those. We bought. We bought a whole bunch of these, like extra long 
uh, popsicle sticks so we can mix epoxy in these taller cups. And we can't find them. Are like exploding ammo? Not sure what you mean. Maybe do I like exploding ammo? I have never used exploding ammo. I don't know if I like it. I'm sure it would be super. I'm sure it would be the funnest thing to shoot, um, but I've never tried it. I think I'm ready to show you guys what they look like now after it's been a little while. Ooh. So that is what that one looks like. The only real of uh, parts of the dark green you can see are right in the middle right there. But I, I really like this, um, this, like, goldish copper color mixed with the black and green. I think it looks great. And then that, it's just beautiful, man. I don't know how she does it, honestly. It's crazy looking. I know you can't even really see the depth in it. But in real life, the blue looks deeper than the orange. It's just too beautiful. I just can't even show it to you. There's no real depth on this one at all. But I still think that it looks pretty gnarly. But that's pretty much what they're going to look like from this point on. Just so you guys are aware. Ugh. Man from Yorg. Exploding ammo. He made bid. Yeah, I've seen Yorg's videos with his exploding ammo. Watch, I'm pretty pretty religious with uh, the Slingshot Channel's videos that he makes. I uh, I can actually talk about that real quick. Um, so when I was a kid, my dad got me a. Uh, fiberglass bow and arrow and I shot that for a little while and uh, I actually got pretty good at archery and I was really into it when he got me the bow because you know you're a kid you're excited and everything and I shot it for like a few years pretty consistently and then I sort of fell off with the whole archery thing, you know, as a teenager, uh, college age years. I didn't actually go to college, but the years I would have been in college and the years all my friends were in college. Of course, we didn't do that kind of stuff. Um, there were a lot of other things going on in my life at that time. But basically, um, after I um, met my wife, her dad gave me a compound bow. And... It was like a pretty high powered bow. It was a 75 pound draw with a 65% let off. And uh, it was a whole new world of archery, man. Uh, going from this tiny little 35 pound fiberglass recurve to a 75 pound compound bow was a game changer. And from that point on, I really did uh, take archery up although it was on and off and on and off and on and off so I would shoot for a little while be pretty consistent and then fall off for a few months or a couple years at a time and then repeat that cycle 
and then I ended up watching uh, I ended up watching the Backyard Bowyer. Um, if you guys aren't familiar, he has a great channel. Uh, he doesn't really post that much anymore on the channel, but he's got a ton of videos on there making uh, archery bows out of PVC, and I was doing that for a while. And then uh, through Backyard Bowyer, I found the Slingshot channel through just recommended videos on YouTube, probably. <laughs> and that was when I really uh, went head over heels for Slingshots. And it's funny, it's like, I think we talked about this before, it was like somebody had said that they progressed from guns to archery to Slingshots. And it was like, that was sort of the progression that I had, and it was like, man, it was just moving backwards, you know? just moving backwards. I do have this memory from when I was a kid. I think I was in the Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts, one of the two, and we did this like field day and we went out and we had to do, we did a whole bunch of different, um, a whole bunch of different Boy Scout stuff, you know, and we had to learn to field dress wounds and we had to learn how to start fires, and we had to learn how to, um, uh, we did like some flag uh, signaling for like different uh, different codes and stuff, like SOS and everything. Um, and then we also did some like little hunting things. <laughs> and one of them was a slingshot, and I'll never forget they had us with, they gave us like these wrist rockets and we were shooting these wrist rockets. And they, for ammunition, they gave us marshmallows. And basically you put the marshmallow in the pouch and you would shoot the marshmallow and it would stick to a target. And <laughs> you got scored on that. And I don't even remember how I did, honestly, but I do remember shooting that um, and thinking like, well, that's, that was crazy. And that was the only slingshot that I ever shot until after I had seen your uh, after I'd seen Yorg's channel, Slingshot channel. Would I shoot a bow? I feel like Rambo. Heck yeah, man. That's what it's. That's what you're supposed to feel like. So that's my little um, little bit of a backstory on my slingshot life. It's funny actually, um, because of Yorg, I was like, I thought I was gonna be really into like the whole power thing, you know, like just shooting huge ammo and um, shooting big, huge, powerful bands and drawing full butterfly. And it's like after I started shooting a lot more, I fell off of doing that, and now I like to shoot the thinnest latex I can find that shoots the projectiles at speeds that I like, and I like to brace grip and, you know, turn gangster, and I don't know, it's like a, everything is basically the opposite, like, I don't shoot butterfly, I shoot face anchor, and, it's funny. I don't know, it's funny to me, I guess. Stay on. We're at 101 minutes, so we'll stay on for another 20 minutes just to get the even two hours. That's typically what my live streams are, and then we'll call it a night. But, bro, see you next time. I'm gonna sleep now. All right, man. Get some rest. Can't wait to go to sleep tonight. Worked out earlier, and 
I'm so tired right now. You've probably seen me yawning. I'm so pooped. Again, guys, if you do want to uh, <laughs> do it again, go to bed, man. Go to bed. Uh, if you guys do want to purchase that same epoxy that I use, there's a link in my description for it. Um, you can get it through my Amazon affiliate link, and that it won't cost you anything extra, and it'll give me a small commission, and it'll help me, um, you know, help support the channel basically. And actually. You don't even have to buy the epoxy. If you use one of my Amazon links that's in the description, anything that you buy, I'll get a commission for. <laughs> so, basically, you can help support my channel when you do want to shop on Amazon just by going to YouTube, opening up my page, clicking on one of my links, and then shopping on Amazon. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it helps support my channel. Actually, I the last couple purchases that I've made on Amazon... I went to some people that I like on YouTube and did the same process. I went and clicked on one of the videos, went to the Amazon link that I found in the description, and then did my shopping so that they, I could help support them. It doesn't work if I use my own link. It does not. It doesn't count. So you guys have to do that. But um, you know, you can buy anything you want on Amazon. It'll help me out. Oh, I also am selling these three slingshots. So if you guys are interested, you can shoot me an email, shoot me a comment, whatever. And uh, take PayPal. And uh, they're ready to go. So I can ship it out basically next day. Oh, and I can show you these as well. This was a different slab that we poured. And again, this is the one my wife did. You can, I don't even know if you can see the depth, but there's depth. You can see sort of my finger behind there. Parts of it are clear. It's just wild looking, man. I don't know how she does it. And then the back side, oh my gosh, look at this. If you guys want to buy the slab, again, just hit me up. It's going to go up on my Etsy probably in the next week or so. We'll probably sell these for about 23 or 24 bucks each. They're a little more than a quarter inch thick. Probably like 5 16 inch thick. And then I have another one here. It's a... I don't know... Black and like a lime green or yellowish kind of color. So you guys can, uh, you guys can hit me up if you want to purchase that. There's the back of that. That looks pretty crazy, actually. <laughs> it's not bad looking at all. These are something that's going to get added to my... to my typical repertoire. I don't even know what I want to do with these. Put them over on that table. Uh. 
Anyway, I'll wait another few minutes, but it looks like everybody's sort of uh, logging off. So if anybody else got any questions or anything, I think I'm going to call it a night here. But uh, let me know. I'll wait another minute or two. And... Alright guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.